hello everybody. My name is Stephanie Cutter. Uh, I'm an assistant to the president who's been working as part of a team to help implement the new health care law. The health care law was passed roughly uh, 11 months ago and signed into law. The president made it clear then that he wanted us to move quickly but carefully to implement the law. There's been lots of talk recently about rolling back the Affordable Care Act, repealing it, and going back to the days of skyrocketing premi premiums and out of uh, control costs for businesses. Today I want to talk about the role of the Affordable Care Act in reducing premiums for families and strengthening our economy and creating jobs. Today we're going to focus on two charts. The first is a chart that shows the premium cost for a family of four with the law and without it. In 2014, when the law is fully implemented, families, a family of four making $33,000 a year will be paying roughly $1,500 per year in premium costs. A family of four making $55,000 a year will pay roughly $5,000 a year in premiums. A family of four making $77,000 per year will pay roughly $8,000 in premiums. And finally, a family making about $99,000 per year will pay roughly $9,000 in premiums. Now, if the law were repealed, these same families wouldn't have these savings because uh, at any income level, a family of four in 2014 would be paying more than $11,000 per year in premium costs. As you can see, there are significant savings, uh, regardless of your income, under the Affordable Care Act, versus what costs would be without health reform, more than $11,000 per year for a family of four. There are several reasons why uh, these co there are significant cost savings under the Affordable Care Act uh, for a family of four and paying for their insurance premiums. First is the cost of uncompensated care. Because the Affordable Care Act brings more Americans into the health care system, we're going to be paying less to care for those without insurance. Today, uh, for a family of four, over $1,000 per year is added to premiums to pay for uh, the health care for people without insurance, people showing up in emergency rooms, uh, getting the care that they need but not being able to pay for it. Those costs will be significantly reduced because we're bringing all of those people back into the health insurance system and getting them the care they need uh, and not uh, putting the burden on those with insurance. Another factor will be new exchanges established in 2014 that will allow millions of Americans to pull together, compare prices, and get the best bargain. The second reason we're reducing costs is because we are getting better value for your health care dollar. Uh, about a month ago, uh, we put a rule in place under the law that is called the medical loss ratio rule, which means that uh, your premium dollars, 80% of your premium dollars, have to go to your health care instead of administrative costs uh, or advertising or salaries uh, at insurance companies. Th that gives you better uh, value for your health care. The third reason uh, we're seeing a reduction in premiums under the Affordable Care Act uh, is because we are strengthening premium re review laws, and we're already seeing the results of that all over the country. Not only do uh, insurance companies have to justify their premium increases, uh, but we are strengthening laws in states all over the country to review those premium increases to make sure that they're justified uh, and that in consumers are being protected. And finally, uh, the last uh, provision under the law that helps reduce costs for families are tax credits. It includes a number of tax credits to reduce the cost of health care for families and individuals to get them into the health insurance market in an affordable way. Now we're going to talk about uh, not just the impact of health care reform on families, but the impact of health care reform on the economy and on job growth. I'm going to flip to another chart. Now I'd like to talk about the role of the Affordable Care Act in our continued economic growth and job creation. As a result of the Affordable Care Act, employee, employer costs are going to drop um, significantly when the law is fully implemented. According to a study by the Business Roundtable, in 2019, when the law is fully implemented and all of its benefits are in place, employers will save roughly, roughly $3,000 per employee per year in health care costs. That helps them to grow to be more competitive, to create jobs, uh, and strengthen our economy. Now, I want to talk about uh, a, char a chart by a Harvard economist about the impact of repeal of the Affordable Care Act on job creation. As you can see, uh, there is a, a, a conservative estimate and a less conservative estimate on how many jobs this country will, lo will lose. If the law is repealed, next year we could potentially lose between 
50,000 jobs and 100,000 jobs in 2012 alone. Now fast forward this all the way to 2019 and when the law is fully implemented, and we could be losing uh, roughly 500,000 jobs per year up to 800,000 jobs per year. On average, that's 250,000 to 400,000 jobs per year. In total, it's 2.5 million jobs to 4 million jobs this country would lose if we repealed the, the Affordable Care Act. Clearly, we cannot afford to go backwards. Uh, we have to continue to go forward, implement the law, strengthen our economy, and help grow our businesses.